Church's Redeemed Service in Racine, Wisconsin. We praise God for you and the things that he is doing this wonderful July morning. God is good. Now we're doing some things this morning from our North Carolina home, and we're zooming into the church in Racine, Wisconsin. So we have a little te technical different difficulties. Bear with us. We're going to ask Mama Lois to come up, and she's going to lead us in prayer in that sanctuary, and then we're going to have Chanel come up and sing a song. Praise the Lord. Chanel's going to lead us 
in our worship. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen, so if you can't, just praise God with us and we'll come back. And we'll actually praise God together again in song online. Stick with us as we're trying this technology of how we do both at the same time. Chanel, praise God from the heart. And then when you're done, I'll sing a song over here as well. Thank you for your commitment and your labor of love in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord come on loud. We say praise the Lord to you also. On today, I just want you to be encouraged. But above all, we, we have to serve and praise our God. Because he deserves all the glory. He deserves all the praise. He blessed us on this week as we went to and fro. We have to say thank you. I don't care what's going on in your life. God deserves it. He deserves the glory. He deserves yes, he does. It. We yes, he does. Put our issues on the back burner. Come on.
God. Thank you, Chanel, for that song of worship. We glorify, we magnify God. We give his name the praise, the glory, and the honor. Let's say hello to the people online today. Kathy, praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Debbie, praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Angel, praise the Lord in Jesus' name. For our God is a God that is and was to come. Thank you, Mama Lois and Chanel and Alex for facilitating the needs there in Racine. We praise God for you and for the things that you are doing. Now, family, we're going to praise here together. You join us in the sanctuary. Join us at home if where you are. I'm going to give you one of those old songs. The Lord says this is the day right now. Now, now listen, you could not be here this morning. Or you could be in the hospital this morning. Or you could be going through some stressful situation that could not allow you to be in the presence of God. But the word of God says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So come on and lift your hands up in your living rooms. Lift your hands up in the sanctuary. Lift your hands up wherever you are. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made.
We're not going to prolong the time. We're going to go right to what we always do. If you at church in the building or if you at home or if you're just watching this for the first time, what we normally do is we, we try to live uh, uh, the commandments of Jesus. And he gave us two commandments. He says, first, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and spirit, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So this morning, find two people and tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. That's right. Just tell them. Put in the chat. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Right there. To, got my son Jacob. I love you on the screen in Jesus' name. Praise God for you. Yep. Put in the chat. I love you in Jesus' name. Because the Bible says, by this will they know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. Family, in this world, in this time period of division, Deception, uh, unagreeable spirits. Uh, we must be the children of the light. And we must display uh, the love of Christ regardless to how we feel. We must obey the Lord's command and show love one for another. Now, that brings me to a quick topic before we get into uh, the offering into the Word of God today. The thing that I, I want to really make sure that we all understand is that the day of the Lord is approaching. And the word of the Lord says that the harvest is great. This is not the time for anyone, any person that calls themselves a Christian to, or a follower of Christ to fall away. This is not the time period to get saddened and hardened in your heart. When you fall away and you stop coming to church and you stop believing in God or you lose your faith, this is not the hour. You know, really it has never been an hour to do so, but as we see the day of the Lord approaching, it is not time to give up. I know it may be difficult. I know it may be hard. And sometimes it seems like we're not even making progression. But the word of God is true. Our God has sent his word, and his word is truth, and it does not return unto him void. Our God said that he is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. The Lord Jesus that ascended up into heaven in the book of Acts is soon to return and to gather his church. I don't want any of us to believe in Jesus Christ. To give up because we're having difficulties. To give up because we're having uh, issues in our life. To give up because we're having financial woes. If you read scripture, uh, every man or woman of God has gone through some things. Have had some issues in their life. But we don't give up. We stay the course and we keep pressing and we keep believing in God until we see the fruits of our labor. In Jesus name. For the harvest of souls is soon to come in. And that's my inspirational thought before we get into the offering. So, at this time, I know uh, Chanel's there at the church, and I know you guys at home. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I, I'm so fearful of the Holy Ghost. I wish I could just uh, share with you all the things that God has in my spirit. And we're going to see some great things, and I'll share in the message. But let's get ready for the offering. It's offering time. Woohoo! Praise God. The word of God says this. And you say, Pastor, why are you shouting when there's offering time? There's two reasons. Uh, one reason is every time we say offering time and Chanel is in the sanctuary, she gives a woohoo! And then in my spirit, I'm grateful to be able to have a seed uh, that God has blessed me with to be able to share in building in his kingdom. And you should be too. It's exciting to be able to have something that I can honor God with. I'm not trying to pay God for his blessings. I'm trying to honor God with my offering to him. So I'm excited. He's blessed me, and I'm going to bless him in return. So we have three ways to give here at the Church of Redeem. You can actually do it as a check. You can do it actually uh, uh, on um, Facebook. Uh, you can do it in, I lost my train of thought. That's three ways to give. You can text us. Venmo. Venmo, thank you. Uh, uh, text message. You can 
turn around and send your offering in. And we use that to not only facilitate the lights, uh, the rent in both locations and the things that we do. Jacob just put it on the screen. Thank you, Jacob, because I did lose my chain of thought there. Those are the three ways to give. Let's pray over our offering and let's get right into the word. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank and praise you for this offering. We thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, for the seed that you have given us to give. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you bless it and you called it to multiply and you called it to increase. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you for it. And everyone said, Amen. All right, so at the church, you can gather your offering and you can just put yours online or whatever you need to do this morning. Uh, family, uh, as you know, uh, this afternoon service will be at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 4 o'clock. Our time will be praising God in Charlotte. If you have an opportunity uh, to do so, join us in that service as well. But today I'm not going to you know, preach. I'm going to more so teach. So I'm going to ask you to turn into your uh, Bible into uh, Joel. We talked Joel last week. I'm going to talk Joel again, but I'm going to throw a, a scripture out of James that correlates with our teaching on the letter rain. And so we're going to go Joel chapter number 2, verse 23 through 30. And then you can grab James in the New Testament, chapter 5, verse 7 through 8. So normally I'm very excited when I preach, but I really want to get the foundation of this lesson, or this message across to as many people as I can, as this is something that is in my spirit. And I'll just give you the topic of the message now, and if you can write it down, it is, uh, be patient. Uh, be patient. That's the first thing. But now watch. And prepare. Be patient and prepare for the rain is coming. Be patient and repair, prepare for the rain is coming. Now if you remember Noah, he was a preacher of righteousness. And he was going around telling everybody, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's going to rain. A lot of people didn't listen to him, so they weren't patient, and they did not prepare. They did not prepare for the rain that was coming to flood the earth. They did not prepare to serve God and were patient to seek him. In fact, they turned around and lived their lives until the last minute, and when the rains came, they were not prepared, and they did not go and went into the ark. Let's read Joel chapter 2, verse 23 through 30. It says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Now that right there in itself is a positive statement that's outside the ordinary. He said, I'm going to give you the autumn rain, and I'm going to give you the spring rain all in one month. That's a big deal. We're going to continue to talk about that. Verse 24 says, and the floors shall be full of wheat. And the vats shall overflow with new wine. Now, today many of us don't have a barn where we store up wheat. I know I don't have a barn. And a vat is a, an unknown word to us. So let me explain a little bit before I proceed. When you talk about a barn, today our barn is our accounts. Your checking account, your bank account. Wherever you have your finances stored up at, that is your barn. Then it says vats. And vats is a big container where they used to store up the new wine. The wine that they progressed and got out of the field from the grapes. They actually turned around and pressed them. And they filled up this large container where they had new wine. 
Our new wine today is our investments. Whatever you're investing in, whether it's time investment, sometimes people to time for dollars, or sometimes it's investment in stocks or bonds or real estate or whatever it is. And what the Lord is saying in these scriptures is that he will not only give you the former and latter rain, but he'll give it to you in the first month. And we should be full of finances and full of favor. Say favor. Say favor. Because it's not all dollars. I don't want you to get stuck and say, Christ is preaching just dollars. That's not what I'm talking about. But it is favor in your pocketbook. Because wheat and wine is prosperity. So prosperity in your marriage, prosperity in your home, prosperity in your account, prosperity in your investments, prosperity in your body, prosperity all around you. That's the scripture that verse 24 is trying to get across to us. Then verse 25 says this, And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the plantar worm, my great army which I sent among you. Family, what he's saying in this scripture is there are some things that need to be restored in your life that the Lord is going to do with the latter and the former rain in one month's time. Now, he's not talking about a 30-day period, but he's talking about it's going to come so quick that it's going to make your head spin. It's going to come from the right and from the left. It's going to be like, I'm blessed with my marriage. I'm blessed in my body. I'm blessed in my pocketbook. I have the anointing where I can go out and bring people into the kingdom. He's talking about the anointing of blessing, the prosperity of growth in your life and growth in the church and growth all around you, spiritual maturity, not just dollars and cent, but prosperity all around you, your dreams. Visions will be restored. Some of you say, I want to be a servant for the Lord. I want to do great things in my life. I want to see uh, people healed. I want to see the blind eyes open. Those things will be restored. But first thing he's going to do is he's going to restore your faith and confidence in him. And that's what we all want. We want to know that we know the everlasting God and we have a relationship not just full of Things because things cannot take the place of the everlasting God in our heart. Not twofold. Verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have de dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. When we're lined up with God, and the letter and the former rain comes in one period quickly, we shall not be ashamed. We should not be ashamed of the things that come at us at night. We should not be ashamed of the enemy that tries to attack us. For when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. We have to know, family, that our God will satisfy us in every area of our life. Verse 27 says, and you shall, what did I just say? No. Say no. Say no. You shall know I am in the midst of Israel. Well, he's talking the Old Testament there, but here he's saying to us, and you, angel, shall know. And you, Kathy shall know. And you, Chanel, shall know. I am in the midst of Israel and that I am your God. I am your God. Listen, we read scriptures. We can quote the scriptures. But the fact of the matter is, is that we need to know our God. Daniel eleven thirty two says, and those that know their God shall do great exploits. When we get to know God, this is a different story. When we get to have a true relationship, where we're not doubting, we're not disbelieving, but we know God. 
That's what I want, and I know that's what you want. That's more than a precious diamond or ruby to know God and His power that dwells on the inside of us. And we should never be ashamed. Verse 28 says, And it shall come to pass, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men dream dreams, and your young men shall, shall, be, shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I pour out my spirit. Now what he's talking about there, family, is the Holy Spirit. He's pouring out the Holy Spirit and it relates to Acts chapter number 2, where the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out. Now we're going to break this down today. I'm not going to rush and I'm not really going to preach. I'm going to do more teaching, but I want you to pay close attention to James Chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. And I'm going to give you a chance to get there. For you guys that are watching us later during the day or watching us um, some other time in the future, I want you to pay close attention to James 5, uh, 7 through 8 because this relates to our reading in Joel. Uh, Joel was an Old Testament uh, prophet, a minor prophet. And now you got James, who is a follower of Jesus Christ, an apostle of Jesus Christ, after the death of Jesus Christ. And here's what he writes. Be patient. First thing he starts out with is be patient. Don't be such in a hurry. Don't go crazy, right? And just hold on a minute. Slow down. And he says, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. We've been saying this for a long time. God's coming. The Jesus is coming. I can't wait. It's been to you. Oh, man. The rapture's getting ready to take place. But he says, brethren, I want you to be patient. Don't get all excited. Don't get frustrated. Have a little patience. Have a little long-suffering. Hold on a minute. The Lord's coming. Behold, he gives an example now. He gives an example. The husband man waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. And have long patience for it until he receives the early and the later rain. New Testament apostle speaking the same terms as the Old Testament prophet. He said, listen, there is a former and a latter rain that's coming. This is coming before the day of the Lord. He said, be patient now. Slow down. Don't get excited. Don't lose hope. I know things don't look like it, but it's like the farmer who's waiting on the precious fruit of the earth. I put some seed in the ground. I've been watering it. I've had some former rain. I've had some little later rain, but I don't see the harvest of the earth yet. Family, be patient. Watch the eighth verse. He says, be patient. Ye also patient. He says it again. He's like three times. I want you to take this to heart. We can't be in a rush with things of God. This is not the McDonald drive through line with God. God is the eternal being. We have to spend our time worshiping, praising, and listening to the word of the Holy Ghost that says they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. It's, it's not about a race here. It's, you know, as, uh, Jacob, when I think about it, you know, we've been talking about sometimes the, the turtle and the hare. You know, sometimes that, 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 that hare goes right out and he's gone to the finish line. He's speeding along. He's, doing, he's way ahead of the turtle. He's gone on. And the turtle is just taking his time, headed towards his destination. And sometimes that hare pulls off to the side. And he starts off to the side. He falls asleep. And he misses getting to the finish line at the due time he was due. Family, we have to be like the turtle in that instance. We have to stay consistent in prayer. Consistent in believing in God. Consistent in trusting until we cross the finish line. This race is not done. This race or this Battle, even the Apostle Paul says, run this race with patience. We got to be patient 
waiting unto the day of the Lord. And then he says, establish your hearts. Get this in your heart right now. This is not something you're going to come, and tomorrow you're going to know everything in the Bible. Tomorrow you're going to be the holiest person. No, it's a process. For the coming of the Lord draweth now. If there's no other time in this generation that we need to know, the Lord is coming soon. Now, I want to give you some definitions of the letter and the form of rain. It says, be patient, for the letter rain is coming. From this text this morning, I want you to know one thing uh, first about, in a natural sense, the phrase that we can identify with the form of rain. Okay, let me give you the natural sense, because in, in, in Joel's day, he was talking naturally but he was talking prophetically at the same time under the unction of the Holy Ghost. The former rain in Israel is in the autumn season. So you think of September, October, November, that's when the former rain would come. The rain would soften the dry ground so they would be able to plant and prepare seed in the ground. That was the natural sense of the formal rain. They were glad to see these fall rains come to place because now the soil was softened up. Now, let me, let me think about this. The long summer months made the ground brittle, hard, and not easy to put a seed in. On Wednesday night, we talked about you know, the four conditions of the heart, and we talked about planting the seed in a hard ground, it doesn't have anything on the pathway, it's easy blown away. So what the, what the writer here is saying is that, oh, I need to form a rain because it's going to soften the soil to allow me to put seed into the ground. This is the natural sense. In Israel, they are glad. When the former rain comes, they're excited. They, they, they praise God because now they can turn around and put seed in the ground and it will stick and it will bring the first harvest. Notice I said the first harvest. And the word that was used there uh, for the word former rain is really a word called, I'm going to spell it because I, can, I don't want to butcher uh, the pronunciation Y O R E H. If I was to try to pronounce it, it'd be Yura. And it comes from a root word, word meaning teach. A root word meaning teach. I find that root word intriguing, that word teaching, because the scriptures tells us in Isaiah uh, 119, if my people will be willing and obedient, they will eat the good of the land. This is an Old Testament scripture that teaches us a biblical principle. You see, he goes on to say, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the word, by the, by the word. We have to be able to hear and learn and obey what the word of God is saying to us. The Old Testament is an example to us. The teachings of the Old Testament are an example for us to learn. We're going to call it in this sense the former reign or the former covenant taught us that faith in God caused men to be blessed. And the, the former covenant taught us that if we stuck with God, like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Daniel, even in the tough times, the former covenant taught us that God would deliver us out of any circumstances, out of any situation. Now, listen, in the spiritual sense, the former reign it has many meanings, but it the most prevalent is this. They had the old covenant where the law of Moses was profound. That was the law. Uh, they, they, when they followed God, they were blessed. When they turned around and did right before God, God opened up the doors 
verse 4 then. No nation could stand against the people of Israel when they turned around and obeyed and followed God's instructions. If you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Even when they got into difficult situations, even when Daniel was in the lion den, even when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were facing the fiery furnace, God was right there and delivered them out of the hand of the enemy. They had the former reign as an example to us today. And Romans 15 and 4, write this down. Romans 15 and 4. Uh-huh. It says this. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through Watch this, watch this, my Lord. Through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You, 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 you see how that patience is? It's, I, I get the examples for those that have gone before me. I get the examples from the uh, 39 books of the Old Testament. And I pick up the New Covenant with the 27 books of the New Testament. And I understand, I get a way of how God ministers and helps his people if they follow him and if they obey his commands. The former rain softened the ground and made it to bring forth the harvest in its due season. Now the later rain, that was that, that was the former rain, the latter rain, in the natural sense, came in spring, or it still comes in spring in Israel. The latter rain, the word is M-A-L-K-O-S-H, is a much harder rain. Now, so I want you to get this now. Jacob, check this out. The former rain was a rain that watered and softened the ground for planting. The latter rain was a downward pouring, drenching rain that actually helped the harvest that had already sprouted out to even grow robust and strong and produce an excellent bumper crop. If you would have turned around and brought in the latter rain, the hard rain, before the former rain, it would have flooded the dry ground. It was bent out of place and it would have made it unplantable. It would have had floods everywhere. But God in his timing, God in his mercy, God, in his grace, sends us the former rain and the latter rain in its due season. And because the latter rain comes, it, 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 was, it was able to bring forth a harvest that was essential for life in a natural sense and brought a robust harvest for the children of Israel, and still today, it brings harvest in that land. Now, in a spiritual sense, the latter rain is rooted in the new covenant. It gets its beginning in the new covenant. After Jesus Christ is raised from the grave and he's ascended up into glory, now we see the Holy Spirit descending down on the earth, and that is the beginning of the latter rain. Follow me now. The Holy Spirit used to be with men. The Holy Spirit was with David. The Holy Spirit was with Daniel. The Holy Spirit was with Abraham. The Holy Spirit was with Moses. But the Holy Spirit in the new covenant, in the new latter rain, abides on the inside of of the believer, so not only we have the power of God down on the inside of us. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 through 5. But when the fullness of time come, God sent his son, made of woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, 
that we might receive the adoptions of sons. Because Jesus came, we are not under the former reign. We're not under the old covenant. Even though it was an example for us, even though it shows us the way God behaves, or the way he deals with man is a better phrase, he turns around and gives us the new covenant, or the lettering, that we have the reign of God, or the Holy Spirit, down on the inside of us. And this began in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. The believers, 120, sitting in the upper room, day of Pentecost, they were 40 days. Talk about patience. Talk about patience. Alex, if you were and I and, and the body of believers were in the church in 40 days, would we be praising and seeking God for 40 days? Uh, somebody would look at their watch angel and they say, uh, listen, uh, pastor, it's 3 o'clock, it's time to go. But these people were patient and they waited on what God told them to do, go back to Jerusalem and wait. If we would just wait on God, if we just stop getting so impatient, we could see the lettering in our lives. If we just hold on, if we don't give up, if we just stop looking at the, the, our watches and think it's going to happen in our time frame, we just let God be God and we be his servants and we seek him and we give our honor to him and we walk up right and we walk this race with patience. Watch God! Bring forth, as he did in the day of Pentecost, he brought forth the latter rain and they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says 120 of them. And because they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. They went out into the streets and the people said, what's going on here? Are these men drunk? And Peter goes and says, no, they're not drunk as you be supposed. With this being such an early part of the day. But he goes back now and he quotes Job, who we just read. But this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And the church grew from 120 to 3,000, from 3,000 to 5,000. From 5,000, they spread it across the region in which they were in. And not only that, persecution came and they spread the gospel. And today, 2,021 years later, the gospel is in every corner of the world. And we keep talking about Jesus, even under persecution. The letter rain, family, is a harvest. It's a bumper crop. And the Bible says, if you look at Joel, when you go home and do this homework for yourself, you look at how Joel chapter 2 opens up in his verse, first verse. He says, be glad, rejoice. But watch this, watch this, and this is where I want you to hear today. He's going to send you the former rain and the latter rain in one month, in one time period. You say, well, didn't you just say the letter of rain and the former rain was, was too much and the harvest wouldn't grow? Let God be God and let us be his followers. Because what he's trying to express to us is that before the great, terrible day of the Lord, is that's what Joel talks about. And that's why James says, hey, be patient because the day of the Lord is coming. It, 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 the day of the Lord's coming but before that great day. There's going to be a great, amazing harvest. In a short time period, it's going to be a harvest of souls. But Jesus said that the harvest is great, but the labor is a few. And if we hold on and we get ready and we prepare for the rain, uh, what do you mean, how do we prepare for the rain? When we follow God with all our heart. When we do as he commands. When we follow the examples of those that have gone before us, we will have more than enough. No one can stand against us. 
No nation, no army, even though they may try. They may even put us in a tight spot. But God will be right there to deliver us out of the hand of the enemy. For his spirit is with us and his power of the Holy Ghost is with us. Family, let me, let me, let me highlight this verse. Verse 23 and 24 of Joel chapter 2. Be glad. Well, what are you talking about? Be happy. You children of Zion. And whenever you see Zion in the Old Testament, it means it's a representation of the church. It says, church and rejoice the Lord your God, for he has given you the rain, former rain, moderately, and it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. The rain and the latter rain before God comes. So how do we get prepared? How do we prepare ourselves for this great harvest? The Lord Jesus is returning, my friend. I want you to hear me. The Lord Jesus is returning. And before he returns, there's going to be an outpouring again of his spirit. Just like in the book of, uh, just like in what we talked about last week of William Seymour and the Zuzu, Zuzu Street Revival. That the Lord is going to call souls to come in like never before. Do you think the enemy is going to win the battle? God is God. He's got souls that are prepared and ready to come to him. We just got to be the lights of the world. And we got to be prepared ourselves. So how do we prepare? We prepare our hearts. And we continuously seek our God. We work in the area that God has given us to work. We are patient and we receive the later harvest in this generation, in this 2021 and the years to come. We prepare our hearts and we be patient unto the day of the Lord. How do I prepare? Prepare. Here's, here's a couple of scriptures for you and I'm going to let you go. First Chronicle. Chapter 16 and verse 11. We're talking about preparing for the coming of the Lord and the form and letter reign in your life. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continuously. That's, what, that's our job. Seek his direction. Seek his guidance. Seek his power. Number two, obey his voice. The Lord says, my sheep hear my voice, and another that they will not follow. A lot of times we, 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 we want to be, do things for God, but we don't want to obey. Then 2 Timothy says, purge yourself from... He says, and this is what I want you to hear, what the word of God says in 2 Timothy, actually, yeah, 2 Timothy 2.21. He says, purge yourself. He didn't say he was going to do it for you. He says, purge yourself from iniquity and sin and the things that are not like God. And then he says, I will use you as a vessel of honor if you, some people say it this way, be ye holy for I am holy. That's scripture. So purge yourself. Put down the things that are not like God. You say, I don't know everything that's like, like, not like God. You know a lot of things that's not like God. You know when you're in left field. You know when you're not doing the will of God. Put it down. You want to be ready to be a part of this great former and latter rain harvest in one season. And then number two, be patient unto the coming of the Lord. And that word patience means tolerant. You be tolerant, right? Long suffering. And one of the definitions that blew me away, Chanel, was uncomplaining. Stop complaining. Just stop it already. When the Lord comes, I don't want to be ashamed. I want to make sure that I'm praising him, I'm waiting on him, I'm glorifying him, and be calm, cool, and collected no matter what's going around. And listen, here's the story. The Lord has delayed 
Well, you know what? I'm going to praise him and I'm going to live the best life I can now until the Lord cracks the sky and says, come my people. The former rain and the latter rain is coming to you and to I, but you have to be preparing yourself, seeking God and following his will, and you have to be patient until it comes. We can't rush it. We got to stay in the seat that we're supposed to be in and doing his work while this day. Behold, behold the husband man, he works, he waits patiently, patiently for the harvest. So family, prosperity in your life, a lot of us need prosperity financially. Some of us need prosperity physically. Some people need prosperity in our relationships. Some people need prosperity in, uh, in their occupation. That's great. That's a part of the form and letter rain. I don't want you to not know that. But there's also something even more vital. That's the prosperity of our souls and our spirits as we follow the voice of the everlasting God and we move forward and do his will on the earth. You know, I, I, I always say this. A hundred years from now, I'll be before the presence of God. Will I have done what everything I could to, to live the life and bring souls to Christ? Will I do everything that I can to, to show my children in the way of God? Will I show my family that I believe in God and I don't care what nobody else says. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand firm in my belief. Will I be patient enough that when I don't see anything happening, will I stay in tune with God and worship Him regardless if I have a my dreams fulfilled or not? Will I line my spirit up to hear his voice? And if you want prosperity in your life, both spiritually and naturally, the form and letter rain is soon to fall upon us all. But remember, the people that are not looking for it, that are not expecting for it, just in Noah's day, they missed the opportunity to be with the Savior, to be with the ark, which was their salvation. We don't want to miss the opportunity. We want to be in the ark. We want to be in the form of letter rain. We want to see our blessings. We want to see souls come in. Because my Bible tells me, and the Lord says, I go to prepare a pace for you, for you, for you, that where he is, I may be also. I want to be with him just like many of you do. Prepare your hearts to receive the form and letter rain and all over your life. It's going to happen so quickly. People are going to come in and start to come into the church like never before. It's not going to come for those that are not looking for him. And those that are not looking for him are going to be still spinning around looking for stuff. Where's God? You know, when he's going to ever move? they got to be moving. Harvest is ripe, the labor is a few. I love you in Jesus' name, and if you have not known the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, we pray uh, that you will receive him today as your Savior. Because the beginning of any of this reign that we've been talking about is really the relationship with Jesus Christ. If you will have the relationship with Jesus Christ, if you will receive him as Lord in your life, the Bible says that uh, living waters will spring up from your soul. These waters of living water. And I don't know about you, I want living water in my life because we need water to survive, but you need the spiritual world water of God to be able to be a tool we use in His hand. All of you today, may God's best be yours. Santos, may God bless you. Anita, may God bless you. Uh, Angel, may God bless you, Chanel, Alex, Mama Lois. And if you have not received Jesus Christ, I always got to remember this. Uh, sometimes people be watching later during the day. Receive him as your Savior. Don't just say what from your mouth, I received Jesus as my Savior. But say it from your heart. And it's a simple prayer. It's a prayer like, listen, Lord, I believe in you. I believe God... Our Father sent you 
to die on the cross for my sins. I receive you as my Savior. And according to your word, I ask for forgiveness of my sins and I'm saved. That's not the end of the relationship. That's just the beginning. He'll come into your heart. He'll, he'll, he'll become your Savior. But the next step is to learn how to follow Him. So we'll pray for you now. We'll pray for those in the sanctuary. And we'll let you all go home and enjoy your Sunday afternoon. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and praise you for everyone that watched us today and worshiped with us this morning. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will strengthen and guide us and direct us in all the places that we should go. We receive the form and letter reign in our life. And for those that have not received you, we pray they open their mouth and they confess you as their Lord in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that those that are expecting the good reign in their life, health, deliverance, prosperity, but the knowledge of you is greater than anything. All of that. May we have the knowledge of you and be your disciples to bring souls into the kingdom. May God's best be yours. We love you in Jesus' name. Have a great Sunday. And for those that are joining us this afternoon, we'll see you at 4 o'clock.